Hey guys, we are in episode number four of our Guitar Kit World ES175 kit build. We are at the point where we are ready to glue the neck on. And this right here is why I built this kit. Now, you find my pointer here. There it is. If you are seeing this episode, and it's the first episode you've seen in this series, you want to stop and you want to click up there because the playlist for uh, this build is right up there. We start off with an introduction. There's a lot of information about some of the guitars I've built and some of the problems I've had with old arch tops and getting them up to speed. Then we opened this kit. Uh, in that episode and then episode two was about the preparation you need to do on the body and how it came and and how ready it was for us to get to episode three which was we actually used Mississippi River water and Mississippi clay to put that cool finish you see now we are into we're gonna bolt bolt yeah, that's what I usually do. We are going to glue the neck onto this thing. Now, before we do that, um, I'm going to show you a, a little bit about why I like that pocket design that's in this Guitar Kit World ES175 kit, the way that's built. I'm going to show you uh, a craftsman, an old craftsman that I have here that we know as the East LA Cutaway. It's one of my junk pile guitars. It's being built right now and that playlist up there for that particular guitar each one of my guitars has a name and then when I build them they have episodes and playlists up there so again East LA Cutaway hover your mouse up there you'll see an eye when it pops up you'll get the playlist for this build as well as any other guitar I reference here so we're going to look at the importance of how the neck lines up in a number of different planes and how easy it is to mess up a guitar and turn into an endless fretting job and who knows what. So let's look at a couple of guitars and then we will we'll actually glue the neck on this thing. I'm going to show you a couple of tricks and how to make sure uh, to avoid some of these problems we're going to see right now. Okay, in terms of introduction, I want, I want you to take a close look there. You see that there's a pocket right there. It's tapered. You can see that it's tapered a little bit. It's deep um, and it's pretty solid. Now, I'm going to introduce you to, to a couple guitars here that have that same kind of setup. Um, what you're seeing here on this kit is called a Florentine cutaway. Now, uh, those cutaways are nice because if you're fretting way down, especially if you're using a slide, it's good to be able to drop down in there. The regular guitars that don't have the cutaway, you, you end up doing this kind of stuff. But I want to show you this one. This one has a similar design. This is called a Brownsville. It looks like a Gretsch. It is actually Sam Ash Music Store's store brand. These are good guitars. If you run across one, they got a, a wow bar, whammy bar uh, built with them. They got good pickups. This thing sounds good. Now, it doesn't have a Florentine cutaway, but it's got that cutaway where you can get way down in here to that last fret. But notice that neck pocket design. It's the same thing. It sits in here. It's got a higher fretboard. There's a pitch back to the neck, which lets you put a nice floating bridge on there and, and adjust plenty of action. So this way is really important, but we also need to think about looking at it this way. What if this thing is warped off just a little bit? So let's say there was something underneath here just a little bit and, and the whole fretboard pitched this way. Well, that would have a great deal of implication on how you play. You'll be forever adjusting the knot, trying to make it up on the bridge. You're basically trying to use the strings and the frets to try to balance out something. That's what, something we're going to look out for here. Same kind of guitar. Um, you know this one as the Texas junk pile we've used this through this episode but it's got the same kind of thing it's got the same kind of notch pocket it sits down in there it's tapered and this neck isn't going anywhere now let me grab 
this East LA cutaway stepping in front of the camera here. This one looks pretty beefy, but check that design out. You've got a V there, you see that? And you've got this here. And what holds this on is this rides down right there and that's it. Do you see that? So let's take a closer look at that and see what that could mean. Okay, guys, I think I got everything I need here to kind of get you set up and understand this. You can't see this kind of stuff from inside the guitar. So let's look at, let's look at this one here. Let's see if I can get this right. Um, it's obvious that the neck um, over laps the body right here it's got that telltale squarish lot of lot of contact space here where i'm going to show you another one in the middle that kind of comes rounded and it's more v-shaped and this is uh more pronounced on the other one but this is the kind of neck pocket i like again if you ever see one of these guitars um they are supposed to be a knockoff on a gretch um, good guitars, they play well, they're made well. Um, so, let's look at the comparable to that. And of course, I'm going to have to put the neck on this one because it's off. But I'll try to give you the same look here. So this one is the old Craftsman. It was made by Kay. Um, it kind of gives you the idea that there's some overlap but you can see the contact point here is much smaller, very different. You see that there? And uh, rather than, let me grab the guitar we're working on right now so we can see what's happening here. When you look at this one, you've got this pocket. There's a lot of room here, there's like three inches here to glue to and there's the same size so you're gluing to three sides here and it sits down you can see I've told you that's tapered there now when we pull this one apart I want you to look at this let's flip this over yeah this guitar is a very interesting story uh, my friend Laurent Bompart did this this is a custom pick guard great artist again you want to check out the playlist for east la cutaway where are we up there yeah okay so let's get these side by side so you can have a look do you see that there's a huge difference between how this one fits in and how this one fits in so now this design here it could be worse, but I, I will give it to them. What they did was they tapered this, and if you take a chisel, you can, you can see that once you get it cleaned off, this bevels inward, inward. So this surface here isn't just flat. It kind of locks in from a bevel here. Now, they shimmed this, I can tell, because there's a piece of wood right here. There's wood missing here, and so... When this came off, the high glue cut loose. I think it was in a garage too long or whatever. So I'm going to have to come through and scrape this. If you're going to do neck resets on old Ks, you need a chisel that's thin enough to do that. So we'll be going into here like this uh, and here and here. And then we're going to taper this. And then the thing to do is, let's say that the neck is pitching one way or another. I can calculate that right here and try to take some off this way which pulls the neck up or file where I need to so I can set the neck angle running axially up and down between the headstock and the end of the fingerboard I can make this tilt like this maybe this is the best way to do it like this by doing some adjustment here that's a lot of work and then ultimately what I'm going to have to do is I was trying I'll, I'll mention this later is I'm going to bolt this neck on. There's a big block in here that I can drill through. So once I get everything set to glue, I'm going to run a bolt through here. But if I'm lining this up from the outside, 
this is curved there's no flat spot to work off of it almost comes to a point you see that so if I come in right here where it's easy it looks like it's going to be easier than down here where it starts to curve out that is going to have me drill in through here and you see a lot of people miss this point right here and then this breaks off and everything's shot so you end up having to come through about here in the middle so you'll drill a pilot hole make sure it's straight and then it comes out about here then you glue everything on and then you use that pilot hole to go all the way through i did an episode called bolting a arch top neck um we're getting way out in the weeds but i'll give that to you right up there right about now anyway this is far less desirable than the kit we're looking at and finally when it comes to the the neck it's funny this is the kit neck and it's starting to look as trash as the old craftsman that's a pretty cool logo i don't usually cover those up like i did this one but when you look at what's going on here and you're thinking everything about the guitar's durability how its neck sits whether it's going to break loose or not i think you can see why i prefer this type of neck there's a lot of work to do here on a thin amount of wood that's really old there is a lot of glue surface here and you're going to see that that's important okay guys a couple of things that you should probably have or make ahead of time um, pretty cheap um, you all know that i make um, license plate guitars and, and uh, cigar box guitars i make my own necks and this material that you see here is just different layers of this material here it's tulip poplar you can find it in pretty much any hardware store and if you and if you glue it up thick enough and and, and have everything I don't want to get into cigar box guitars and stuff but if you glue it upright and make it thick enough in the right places it makes pretty good neck so I've got two pieces of this that are as wide as the body where I'm going to glue it. You see that? It's sticking out there a side here and a side here. And I've got one here. Now, I want to point out something to you. This neck starts, the, the, the sound board or the top, they call this the sound board, starts to rise up right here. You don't want to be clamping right here and pushing down here. You want to find out where this is and we're going to clamp and hold the neck down because the neck comes over here and of course we're going to have something out here where you can't see that way to support it but do i want to put this on here like that no not really and then i need you to know that you can't see it here but this fretboard is radiused it it goes like this it's not flat like this so if i start clamping down on this and I get to one side of it or something, it's going to cause that neck to pitch if there's even the slightest play down in here. You know what I mean? So if this isn't level this way, it pitches this way, and then these frets are higher than these, and it, it just turns into a mess. If you are going to buy a guitar, look down the neck. So you want to look at the 12th fret and see how high the strings are. If it doesn't have a truss rod, then you can't adjust it. That's a bad deal. It's going to need a neck reset to pop that back down. And that's where you would carve this off on one of the mother guitars. But anyway, this needs to sit flat. If it doesn't, and you get a little bit of this or a little bit of that, that's what we're going to be paying most attention to here. So how do you clamp something that's radiused with a flat piece of wood? Let me show you. Okay, guys, I want to show you something really cool. This is cork paper. It's made out of cork. It has an adhesive strip on the back. You can pull this back like so and stick it to the wood. So I like it because it's graft on the back. I put my piece of wood here, enough to come up on the sides or even to go all the way around. I lay it out. I come over to here. And I cut along that line. So I'm going to cut two pieces like this, and you don't need to watch that. Okay, so I have two pieces of wood the same length. I put this on the end, and then I just cut that off there. We're going to want to save those cutoffs. In fact, we're going to cut some more just like them here. But now, 
I can simply pull the corner of this and this stuff comes in a roll. Um, it's also great for shelf paper uh, because cork doesn't mold and get bacteria. So I just lay that down like this, line it up about in the middle like so and press down pull the sides up like so okay try to get a nice clean like that okay there we go we have two pieces of wood that are padded that we can put up against the body of the guitar and not hurt anything. One last thing to do with the cork paper. So the two pieces that we had that were cut off from the end for these, what we're going to do is we are going to just roughly measure those out and cut strips that are the same size like so we're going to end up with quite a stack of them here as you can see now we're going to pull the paper off of them and stick them together and remember that the, the back of the cork paper is sticky so we want to save the last one we're going to stack these up but we want to save the last one and flip it over so there is no adhesive sticking we just want to end up with a pile of cork that's together and so we're just doing this putting the corners together on top of each other and pulling the paper off like so until we have them all together see you in a minute okay there they all are adhesive up and then of course the last one I can never get this off of here when it's time for the camera I'm just going to turn this one upside down where the adhesive lines up like this and I've got a pile of cork paper like that now look it's flexible if I want to get super freaked out about life, I can just take my edge and my razor knife and cut these off. But you end up with a pile of cork paper. That's what we're after. Okay, guys, we are getting to the end game here. Um, I want to show you one more little trick. This is 400 grit sandpaper. You've seen me make uh, something that will sand across the whole body with... A piece of neck wood I, but I can just put this here like this okay and then I can put stand this up I like to stand it up like that right in the middle like so and then I just I want to make sure that these corners are really tight like this so I want a little sanding block like that 400 grit um, this is hide glue and it's hot and I know it's hot because it's in a heater and the red light is on. I'm going to put this on with this neck with hide glue. I'm not going to use tight bond. If I want to take the neck back off, I can heat up the hide glue. They've been doing this for years and years. Now, I can feel the bottles warm. Nothing's boiling, but the hide glue is hot. I've got my two blocks that are cork lined cork covered and I got my cork block okay while our hide glue is warming up there's a couple of things we want to think about once this neck goes on here we lose a lot of access so there's a three-way switch that goes here can I make life easier by taking some dental floss putting a loop in the end of it like that dropping it down in there like so and then taking my piece of coat hanger, reaching in and grabbing that loop and pulling it up here and tying it off 
and putting something here where it won't fall in. So when it comes time to wire the three-way switch, I put the harness in. I pulled the dental floss up and boom. Think about things like that. Next thing is you don't want a bunch of stuff on the inside of the guitar. We're going to have a little bit more sanding to do. So, But I've got this blower thingy. Um, it's really handy. It sucks. It's got a vacuum and a blower on it. So I can just flip this on and... Like so. Now, I made that little piece of sand and block. What's that for? Well, I can go along the side like this. You see that? I can also take my longer one that's for the whole body, which is really handy, and come in like so and make sure that there's nothing there. Put this like so and run across the bottom that logo should disappear evenly um, I want to make sure that there's nothing in here I'll tell you what if there's a little sliver in here or a piece of that cork what's going to happen is the neck when it's in, it's going to pitch and when it pitches your bridge your strings your frets it, it's a nightmare that you can't fix so this is a part where you want to be really really careful and then anytime you sand or anything, get all the dust out of the way. Okay, so the last thing we want to do is we want to make sure that all of our sanding stuff is out of the way. We want to have our neck rest handy. We want to have our clamps and all of our stuff ready. The other stuff, get it out of the way. And then the last thing you want to do is make sure that, again, there's no way that a piece of cork or anything else is and use your brush and get everything as clean as you can. This has to be clean. All righty, the time has come. Make sure everything's padded good. Put the neck on here. And we will go ahead and put our cork bar right there and pull one of them rags out so it rests okay there we go there we go now I use what's called an acid brush you put flux on things when you are going to solder things so these things are pretty handy they're pretty cheap the hairs don't come out of them again I'm going to make sure that I've got a lint free paper towel the wipe all 80 is good Nothing hangs up, and there we go there, and my hide glue is nice and warm. There we go. There we go. Okay. So, last thing I'm going to do is make sure that my neck is wiped off with a lint-free rag. See, there was a little piece of something fell off there. I don't know what it was, but anyway. We're going to make sure. See, we didn't get a lot of finish and stuff on there, so the sides will work. We're going to fit it and make sure it sits right down in there. Again, this is you're only going to have one time to do this. There we go. Nothing along the edge. You got sandpaper and everything ready in case there is. Now, this is the point of no return. We're taking this brush, we're not going to drip everything all over, and we're just going to paint the hide glue on there evenly on these three sides. I don't need to put it on the top of the guitar up here, I just need to put it on the three contact sides here right here like so these brushes are great yeah, I don't want to be globbing this stuff all over the place our fit was really nice 
that was probably the one thing that I was most impressed with out of the factory was because if these necks are not right that's what makes a guitar okay you've got some time to work with this stuff because it's warm it's not like using super glue or anything like that but once it starts to set I'm gonna make sure that my coating gets right up to those edges and along that front there I'm gonna do the same thing here it's gonna go Again, I don't need to worry about getting it up there. If I need to worry about that little strip there, I'm in trouble. The back, this part, doesn't glue to anything. It sits right there, so we're going to get that. The bottom here, it sits right there, okay, on the bottom. But again, most of this stuff is the three sides. You know that that crest right there. Okay, there we go. We're going to have a warm rag, wet rag ready because we're not going to goop so much of this stuff on here. But there we go. Wonderful. We'll put a little bit right there. We're going to have some contact there. There we go, like so. Perfect, it's starting to get a little tacky. Okay. This stuff flows nice when it's warm. You really don't want to be doing it using high glue to glue a neck on in the winter time in your shed, that's for sure. All right, here we go. Party time. I'm going to drop it right down in. Ooh, that's a nice tight fit right there. There we go. Okay. We've got a little bleed off here. We're going to push that out of the way right away. These rags are awesome. Make sure there's nothing there. All right, let's rearrange things a little bit and get clamps on it. All right, so here we go. Remember that cork paper that we put together? I can put up here. I have this block down here. I have this one over the top. Now, this is a little bit tricky, uh, but see, this forms to the radius. This pushes down. Nothing is getting out of control. I can't, I don't see anything moving around. And I got a couple of these cool clamps here that are pretty cool you just pop them up like this and we're going to put this one under here this is handy to have a couple people but we're just going to plop this one down like this for a little bit like so and then I'm going to come over here and then I can tighten these up by like this see but I can take this over here now open up this one like so and I've got this one sticking out just a little bit and I can just pop that up slide it down adjust it however I need to and get it tight enough oh last thing when you take your hide glue out of the heater Take your brush, because that little bit of water you got down in there, yeah, don't run these things dry. Put a little bit of water in there, you see that? You can take your acid brush and get it right, and you can you get a couple uses out of it that way. Don't forget to turn this thing off. Okay, guys, it is the next morning. We are ready to pull the rabbit Pac-Man looking clamps off of the Mississippi mud slide that we used to glue on the neck finally. Look, you see that's curved. That's because this was pushing down. If it's flat, the neck will be tilted anyway. Check it out. Ooh, no muss, no fuss. 
All right, guys, one more time. The keys to this were we got these pieces of neck board and we put cork paper on them. Um, they worked out really well, especially pushing down here. I want you to notice that the radius of the neck was captured here. If we wouldn't have put this here and had this sitting like this, this wants to teeter-totter, which would, if you have any slop down in the pocket, is going to tilt your neck one way or the other. And again, the results of that are a long-term lifetime of misery in an instrument, and that makes it difficult and unplayable. All right, there we go. I am happy with this. Nothing's awry. Might have a little bit of touch up to do down at the edge of the neck pocket, but this thing is strong. What's this scrapparatus on here? Yeah, it's to pull the three-way switch into there. If you watch the episode, you would know that. Anyway, I think that this thing is durable. I think that it is true as it as it can be with the painter's tape protecting the fingerboard from something that I'm going to do to it that some of you think will destroy it. But I'll tell you what, this thing is solid, it doesn't move, and I think I hit a home run with this puppy. So um, throw the ball, would you? Hey, next episode is about theming, and there is going to be Coveter's Corner, Coveter's Paradise. There are going to be things in here that going on this guitar that are going to make it so unique and you're, you're not even going to believe it. So anyway, give me a like, subscribe if you haven't. I'm going to load this episode into the playlist that's building up. And again, hey, Guitar Kit World, the prep work you did on this in the factory you didn't send me something all loose and bagged out um this is not a friday night 2 a.m special that's for sure so hey guys i will see you next time i got some baseball to play throw it would you just throw it don't worry about it i paid for the guitar just throw it Alrighty then